I've been wanting to do a review on my 2022 Bronco for quite a while now, but it was more of a matter of the right timing to do it. I didn't want to do this review right after I bought the vehicle during its honeymoon period where it's the best vehicle ever, there's nothing wrong with it, and you can't go wrong by buying one. Oh, and just as a side note for when I'm actually doing this video, I've had the Bronco about 10 months, just short of one year, and I'm just under 10,000 miles, so that's the time frame that I'm basing this video on as far as the ownership and the time that I've had with it. So I wanted a good amount of time to go by where I had an ample amount of time with the vehicle to really give it a fair evaluation for its good points and its bad points because everything about the Bronco is not 100% perfect. A lot of it is its inherent flaws of what it is as primarily an off-road type vehicle. So buying it as a daily driver, some of these quirks you have to live with a little bit. And this is more of a review on the two-door Bronco. There are factors with the four-door Bronco which don't play into this review. I'll start out with a lot of the things that I like about the Bronco. One thing is the styling. It looks really, really good. Ford did an excellent job with the exterior design and how the Bronco looks. It didn't uh, go as too much of a departure from what the Bronco always was before. It still very much maintains that Bronco feel to it. Now, I primarily use this Bronco as my daily driver. I go back and forth to work. I do errands, grocery store, visiting friends, family, stuff like that. This is what I use this for. It's my primary daily vehicle. So that's basically what this review is focused around. There are a lot of other Bronco channels out there that do a lot of off-road type stuff. But I think out of all the Broncos sold, the majority of them are probably going to be driven on the pavement more so than going off-road. So this is more of what this is focused on. And one of the great aspects about the Bronco is how well it drives. I don't have the stock wheels and tires on this. I had a video not too long after I bought this on the wheel and tire setup. I'll link that in the in a card up top. So it's not the stock form as far as the wheels and tires, but despite that, it still rides exactly like it did before. And the quality of ride for the Bronco is excellent. Ford did a really good job with the independent front suspension, making this a good daily driving vehicle. It, rides very very nice takes the bumps very well and it just makes a very pleasant vehicle to drive around on a daily basis where you think something that's like a big square box it's probably not going to ride all that well at least that's what it looks like from the outside but when you're actually in one and driving one it does ride very very nice now this is a 2.7 and I've had zero problems with it. I know there was a big thing a while ago when the Broncos first started coming out with the 2.7s having some problems and stuff like that, but that has not been the case with mine. I think that was a very short run of Broncos. They had some bad parts and it resulted in some bad um, engines more, more or less. But this has been great. I have just under 10,000 miles on it and no problems with the engine at all with it. So the reliability factor and the daily driving factor of it, I would rank very high for this vehicle. I enjoy it very much. Those of you that are jumping on a video for the first time, non-Cobra related content, which I mo mainly focus on this channel, it's mostly around my Terminator Cobra. Uh, I do live in the Northeast. I really wanted to do this review when there was snow so I could give it a good snow rating as far as how well it handles in the snow. And I have, we haven't gotten any snow, <laughs> so uh, I can't really do that at this point. I prefer not to get snow. I really would like not to, but I spec this out when I ordered it with the anticipation that it, it would be driven in the snow. I did get a rear locker on it in case I get buried in my driveway and I wanted to just blow through a foot or higher snow bank that was really rough to get through, things like that. But I haven't been able to test it out. I do have the uh, BF Goodrich KO2 tires on it, which are really, really good uh, winter tires for it. But like I said, uh, it, it's still like once one day, the roads were like barely covered. It really wasn't a fair assessment. Didn't even have to put it in four wheel drive. So I can't give that aspect on it. Maybe later on this winter, we'll get a few storms where I can test it out a little bit more. But for now, that's a unknown um, aspect of the Bronco that I haven't been able to really give a good evaluation on at this point. 
One of the other factors that I really like about the Bronco is the Lux package. A lot of people complain about the B&O surround sound system in here, but with a few adjustments, it can sound really, really good. Not as good as doing like an aftermarket system, of course, but for being a factory option, it does sound really good. What I found that helps a lot is to adjust uh, the bass, the treble, and all that in the settings, and also to make sure that the surround option is turned on. Uh, from the factory, it comes as regular stereo, but if you run it in the surround configuration, it does sound quite a bit better. But I didn't get the Lux package just for uh, the B&O sound system. There were other factors within the package for why I got it. But overall, it, do I think it's worth getting a Lux package? I think for some people it definitely is. If you want a better sounding stereo system, if you want some of the built-in tech with the Lux package, I believe it has the blind spot monitoring for the mirrors on this side. You have the 3D backup camera, stuff like that. It may not be for everyone as far as, you know, your usefulness that you get out of it. But for me, I use all this stuff pretty regularly as far as what the Lux package incorporates and what I get for use out of it. Now, as we all know, life is not about lollipops and rainbows. So that means there are some bad things about the Ford Bronco that I don't really like about it. Some of this is specific to the two-door. Other things are inherent because of what the vehicle is regardless of whether you get a two-door or four-door or what model. One thing that I doesn't really sit with me too well is the lack of space in the back. There's just a real limited amount of space in the two-door. You can remedy this a little bit by folding the rear seats down to get a little bit more room, but if you have the, if you have the back seats up and you're trying to stuff a lot of stuff in there. You're real limited on the amount of stuff you can pack in there. Luckily for me, I don't really need to use the, the available space back there all that much. I do, I can fit my dog back there, but other than that, <clears throat> there's not a whole lot that I really use it for other than groceries and a few items here and there, pellets for my pellet stove, things like that. So you, it's manageable, but you have to have expectations of the fact that you're not going to be able to fit a whole bunch of stuff in there like you can with a four-door or, of course, with a, a full-size pickup truck. Another issue that I have with a Bronco is the windshield itself. A lot of people are going to think I'm going to bring up the cracking problem. I'm not bringing that up because it hasn't happened to me, so it's not a problem. What I'm talking about is the visibility factor. Because the windshield is not very big, most vehicles have a very large windshield from top to bottom. The windshield of the Bronco is very short. It's not very tall. So the problem is when you have a very bright sunny day outside and you go to put your window, your visor down to block the sun, you block about three-fourths of your window and your visibility goes right downhill. You can't see anything with that visor all the way down. So you kind of have to compromise and you can put it at an angle kind of like this maybe that's like a 45 ish degree angle but if you go full all the way down all you see is probably what's five or six feet in front of the nose of the bronco and you can't see anything out past that because the visor is covering it up and that's an inherent problem with every bronco it's just because of the style of what this is and they couldn't put a large windshield in this and still have it retain the bronco look and so it's more of like a nitpick you have to realize that going into you know getting a vehicle like this i'm not sure if it's the same on the jeep but for the bronco the visibility does kind of blow when it comes to having to put the visor down if you come into a situation where you need to do that now overall it's not terrible so i'm not knocking this really bad because i've owned a lot of ford vehicles i've owned 11 yeah 11 total this is my 11th ford I've owned six Mustangs and I've owned a lot of Mustangs during that time frame that were in the 2000s and 90s era. So I'm used to absolutely junk interior with those cars. The Bronco interior is not junk, but it does have a lot more hard plastic than what I would prefer for it to have for the amount of money that you're paying for these. The steering wheel itself is nice. It's very plush. Uh, it's got a good feeling to it, but the plastic over here on the doors, the trim up here for the dashboard, uh, the trim down here around the radio uh, screen, 
it's all pretty hard plastic and it could be better like this trim here around the door handle is more plush it has a little bit more um give to it you can you know put your finger in it a little bit everything else is pretty hard plastic it is a better interior than a lot of ford vehicles have had in the past but the bad part is is that it could be better especially for the price point for a lot of these Broncos, especially if you're one of these people that paid it over msrp which um i feel bad if you had to or if you wanted to i guess that's your financial choice but if you pay for over msrp and you get a car or vehicle because this isn't a car a lot of people call it a car um, the interior should have been better even at its base model price of msrp the interior should have been better um, overall it's not terrible i mean i'm coming from my 2004 cobra which is an absolute junk interior no one buys those cars for the interior but the flip side of that is Ford has improved over the years, but it's still not the best overall. So in conclusion, what do I think of my Ford Bronco? All the good points and the bad points. If you have one of these on order, or you're thinking of ordering one down the road, you're absolutely going to love it. It is a very, very nice vehicle. I really enjoy it. The few issues that I have with it are superseded by the good things about it. And I, it's it's such an enjoyable vehicle to drive it handles so well it drives well um, the power is very good in the 2.7 this is a vehicle that i could see myself owning for many years down the road and that was a main purpose for why i bought this i wanted something more long term and this really does fit that bill where i can i can get in this every day and drive it do regular daily things with it and i don't regret my purchase i love it a lot it's a very very excellent vehicle so if you're waiting for your order to be delivered or you're thinking of ordering one you you won't be disappointed there are so many people in the facebook groups that say they waited so long for their bronco and when they finally got it all of that didn't matter because they loved it so much and all of it's true it really is a great vehicle if you did enjoy the video and you made it to the end i'd appreciate it if you did throw it a like i primarily focus on my 2004 cobra so if you want to see more on that uh, make sure to subscribe it would be really cool if you did i appreciate any new subscribers for whatever reason i do stuff on the bronco from time to time mostly on the cobra other cool things every once in a while so if you want to see all that other stuff feel free to subscribe i really would appreciate it but above all else thanks for watching